Welcome back, everybody. We end today's show with new developments in the death of 29-year-old Tyree Nichols. On Monday, his family held a press conference after being shown the horrific police encounter with their son through body cam footage. Antonio Romanucci, an attorney for the victim's family, described the police encounter as a, quote, nonstop beating for three minutes and Nichols as a, quote, human pinata. Nichols died three days after his confrontation with police on January 10th. He was pulled over for alleged reckless driving, and police say that Nichols ran before being taken into custody. After complaining of shortness of breath, Nichols was taken to the hospital in critical condition. So far, five responding officers have been fired, and two members of the fire department have been suspended. The extent of his injuries and the official cause of death haven't been revealed, and the body cam footage of the arrest is expected to be released in the coming days. As the investigation leaves many details still in the dark, prominent civil rights attorney Ben Crump shed a positive light on Nichols' life. Not Tyree. Not Tyree. I mean, he was a good young man. A good young man. Everybody from FedEx, his co-workers, all his skateboarding community, all the people who were in photography class with him. Um, I mean, this was a good kid. His mother said the things that stood out to her about what was his focus in life, skateboarding, and we'll share with you video of how good of a skateboarder he was. Photography and computers, and most importantly, being a father. He loved his son. Everything he was trying to do was to better himself as a father for his four-year-old son. So, Terry, the video hasn't been released to the public, but based on the current reports, you think there's enough evidence to file murder charges against the five police officers? Yes, I do, Jesse. I think there's enough here. First of all, he was stopped, but he ran away, and then he was confronted. But it turns out, you know, there was a use of a stun gun, and he also was also being held. Five individuals against one individual. And these five police officers, they have all been on the force for over 20 years. They're now all fired. And the police department itself said that it was excessive force and they didn't provide any sort of medical care. I think those facts are enough facts to charge. I don't think it'll be first degree murder that they'll get a conviction for. First degree here is making sure that it's premeditated and that it's intentional. I don't know if they'll be able to show that. But second-degree murder and certainly manslaughter, I think they would be able to demonstrate here. Brian, some of the officers, they were part of the organized crime unit. Why is that important? Why does that stand out? Just a few things, Jesse. Organized crimes, like Jesse said, these people were on the force for 20 years. They're looking for the big crime, the, the, the drug dealers, the, the gangsters, the killers, the shooters, all of those. So if they're looking and stopping someone for a traffic infraction, that's what they believe is happening. And well, the type of crime that they're used to uh, dealing with is the big crime. If I was to use an analogy, this is like using a sledgehammer to put in a thumbtack. Is it possible that I can do it without destroying the wall? Yeah, I have to be very, very careful. But like you see here, they brought a sledgehammer to a thumbtack and they just beat the wall. They destroyed everything. And I know it's a poor analogy to use when you're talking about someone who died, but that's what I see in these cases with organized crime unit going after small cases. People are terrified of them because of the force that they exert and the force they're used to exerting against people. So when people like Tyree Nichols get into their pathway, they don't often take the soft approach, they take the hard approach. And I think mm -hmm. that's what stuck out to me when I heard that some of them were from the organized crime unit. That's a good point, and it's going to be interesting to see what a possible defense will be uh, for what I've been resulting in. Brian, Terry, thank you both so much. Everyone out there, thanks for joining us here on Long Crime Daily. We'll see you next as we discuss justice in America.